Hi, my name is Tim Vale. I'm the head of sales engineering here at Cockroach Labs. And today we're going to be talking about Cockroach Database, Docker Compose, and how to use those two technologies together to do some really interesting and complicated, if you so desire, local testing against our database. Uh, before we get started, maybe just a couple things to note. Uh, this is the only picture of myself that I could find. As you can tell, I don't look like that at all anymore. My apologies, the last year or so, I think I've gained quite a bit of weight and aged considerably, but uh, oh well. And secondly, I'm not really on Twitter. I have a Twitter handle, but if you need to urgently get a hold of me, I suggest either uh, you reach out to me on LinkedIn, send me an email if you can find it, or of course you can tweet to Cockroach, uh, whose Twitter handle is, is down here below. So before we get into uh, the, the guts of this presentation, I wanted to kind of set a little bit of context. We're going to be talking about databases, and so I thought it might make sense to, to describe how we think about different kinds of databases. So if we look way back in history, um, and, and certainly these exist today, there are, uh, there are centralized databases, for lack of a better term. And these are okay for some scenarios, I guess. Um, and, and what do I mean by a centralized database? Well, it's a single database. It's a monolith. It isn't distributed. It's just in one instance of a thing performing or serving all of your needs, your database needs. As I said, these are okay, uh, but not great. And they fall for or are susceptible to certain traditional challenges. They're easy to overwhelm. What does that mean? That means there's only one of these things. And uh, if you provide or put too much work onto these databases, they can be overwhelmed, they can fail. They're difficult to scale. These aren't horizontally scalable things, they're more like vertically scalable things. So if I need to increase capacity for my database, I need to take the database offline, I need to add more RAM, I need to add more compute. This can be difficult to do. And you know, without, uh, it's no surprise these are single points of failure, right? I mean, if I have one of something and there's a problem with the disk, there's a problem with the data center that it sits in, we have a single point of failure, not great. And then obviously DR strategies become rather complex, costly and inefficient. There's some great examples out there, but if I only have one of thing, then it's really important that I back it up. Uh, but to do that and to do that well can get expensive. It's a brittle infrastructure, in other words. But you know what the good news is? If I need to test locally, if I'm building an application that talks to a database, I need to test locally. Having one of something is really easy to deploy and really easy to test against. I think, in general, the, the database market has moved beyond kind of centralized databases. And so there are emerging lots of distributed databases. They're better, but they're not perfect necessarily. They solve a lot of the traditional challenges that single instance databases have had. They're not as easy to overrun or overwhelm. They're much easier to scale in that instead of having to take uh, an instance out of commission and add CPU or add horsepower, I can simply add more of these things. They no longer is a single point of failure, right? If I have a cluster now or a distributed system where data exists on many, many different nodes, there's no single point of fail failure, hopefully. And then, you know, because, because there's no single point of failure, traditional DR strategies may not always apply. Uh, in some cases, you know, can be less complex, less costly, and certainly more efficient. But generally speaking, as we've increased kind of the complexity of the topology of the cluster, we've made it really difficult to test these kinds of distributed databases locally. Uh, for a long time, I worked for a big Hadoop company. If you're familiar with Hadoop, you kind of understand what I'm talking about here. The pain of deploying something as complex as that distributed technology locally is, is really quite high. I have many different services or service types or node types providing different functions to the cluster. Uh, they may expose a whole host of ports. They can just be rather complicated things to get up and running. Again, they solve many of the challenges of single instance databases, but they're not easy to test locally. So CockroachDB is something that, that we like to think of as the most highly evolved database on the planet. And I think for the purposes of this discussion, the most highly evolved distributed database on the planet. And so there's a couple key differences 
um, and benefits, we feel like, from not only centralized databases, but your traditional distributed databases. Uh, first and foremost, CockroachDB is Postgres wire compatible, meaning it can use traditional or community provided Postgres drivers. We speak the Postgres language. That's not to suggest, by the way, that we are built using Postgres. In fact, we're engineered from the ground up, written in Go to be something very different, but we do speak the protocol. In addition, we're a single binary that exposes two ports. So in, you know, unlike other distributed systems where I may have different nodes serving different functions, running on different ports that may have different upgrade paths, different technology kind of release cycles, Cockroach is a single binary. It's deployed everywhere or anywhere in your cluster and it exposes two ports, dead simple. Not only that, but each node performs the exact same function. There aren't worker nodes, there aren't coordinating nodes, there isn't Zookeeper sitting out there keeping track of the whole thing. Every single node is packed with the same level of intelligence, is able to do and perform the same function, which is a, a fancy way of saying each node can serve reads and writes, and that's really important. And then of course, just a general benefit of Cockroach is that it's extremely hard to kill. Um, and so the, the, you know, as, as we go through and talk about the, the rest of this conversation or the rest of this presentation, you know, Cockroach is not only an excellent database, but when it comes to deploying and testing locally, it's a very simple thing to do because it's a very simple topology. It's a very simple set of technologies. So let's get into the let's get into the kind of the meat of how we actually deploy Cockroach on top of Docker Compose which as we all know is a really wonderful technology for, for building and running things like databases locally. I have a GitHub project uh, out in the wild that you're more than welcome um, to navigate to. Uh, I have a whole host of examples available. We're gonna go through two distinct examples today. One is how to start and run an insecure cockroach cluster. That means one that's not locked down with with all of our security protections. And then the second example we'll go through is how to deploy a secure cockroach uh, cluster. So before we get into to the examples, uh, just a quick note about my approach to Docker Compose. Uh, I, you know, right up front am no, no expert, but I've been working with this stuff for a while and I've kind of come to, at least by my definition, some best practices, which I think are important to share before I, I show you all the, the work that I've done. You know, one of my goals or one of the things I try to do is to keep it simple and self-contained. Uh, particularly when you're working with distributed systems, it can be very easy or, and um, it can be very easy to add complexity, to, um, to rely on external configuration files, to uh, rely on a whole host of, of things outside of the compose file in order to get the cluster or a cluster up and running. I try not to do that. I try to avoid most external dependencies when I'm when I'm creating um, compose files or projects. Kind of very much related is I tend to favor image references over um, things that Docker has to build or Docker Compose has to build. So again, a kind of a, a, a trick that I've seen sometimes is I'll refer to some or someone will refer to a, a another Docker file that Compose then has to build uh, before serving up its services. I try to stay away from that. Because why? Well, in the end, all I really want to be able to do is share a single Docker Compose file with you, with prospects, with customers, instead of having to bundle up or zip up a whole host of things to share with you. It just becomes complicated. So I try to keep things into a single, a single Docker Compose file, and I think we've done that. Then the other thing is I try to avoid, it's not always possible, but I try to avoid manual sequencing of things or other stuff um, that exists out do outside of Docker Compose. My goal is to have the whole thing started by the simple docker compose up command. I shouldn't have to um, have a bash script that manually starts different services in a particular order and introduces sequencing or timing between services. But as many of you know who have been working with Docker and Docker Compose specifically for a while, this isn't always the easiest thing in the world to do. And so unfortunately, while our secure example, our insecure example, excuse me, leverages Docker Compose up. The secure example has to rely on some of this kind of manual sequencing. So let's jump into what Docker Compose, a Docker Compose file looks like for an insecure cluster. Uh, again, I will reference the, the, the project that's available on GitHub that has obviously this whole file and other related files uh, 
out there for you to, to review. But let's talk about kind of the, the services that are important in getting CockroachDB up and running in Docker Compose. First things first is we have to start a node. Um, and, and we define it in this way. I particularly like to use container name and host name as a way to just be very clear about what a service name is or what my container or, other, or image name is going to be. Obviously, these aren't required things, but it's something I like to do. Uh, here we're referring to the, the, cockroach, uh, the cockroach image that's, that's out on Docker Hub. Uh, I'm referring here to the latest, but we can obviously be more specific if we need to be. But I think the real meat of this is you know, the command here in which I'm starting a single node. I give it a name. I give my cluster a name, in this case, example, HA proxy. Uh, one of the things I like to do, and this is a cockroach specific thing, obviously, is that I like to be, um, I like to keep my logging down to a minimum. Cockroach in particular tends to be very chatty. And so I like to set my logging, um, my logging values to warn so that I don't get a lot of the debug and info stuff that's happening. We're going to be starting an insecure cluster, as I stated. And so that's a flag here that you'll see at the bottom. And then uh, we'll see this kind of play out uh, a little bit later. But it, what is important when starting a cockroach cluster is that the node has to be told which existing cluster to join. Uh, and you do that through the join flag at the bottom here. In this particular case, what we're saying is we're going to join. This first node is going to kind of join itself. And then it, it's a, a fancy way of saying we're going to initialize this cluster later. So this is just an example of one of the services or one of the nodes that, that would be specified in a, in a fuller and more complete uh, compose file. Generally speaking, when I'm building uh, applications using Cockroach and deploying them locally with Compose, I start a, a three node cluster. And so this is a CRDB zero, but you would expect to see CRDB one and two in a more complete example. So in addition to starting nodes, a typical Cockroach deployment uh, contains a load balancer in front of it to help balance connections to the underlying nodes. In this particular example, I like to use and do use HA proxy quite often. There are other things that you could do. Uh, what is it? Um, oh, I can't think of what the other one is, but there, there are other um, examples or other software-based load balancers that you could use. And just as a quick side note, in general, if you were deploying Cockroach um, to production, you could use hardware load balancers. You could use cloud-provided load balancers if you were, if you were doing, um, you know, deploying into some a cloud environment. We just prefer and recommend some sort of software load balancer in front or hardware load balancer. And in this case, we're using HA proxy. Uh, and so, you know, here's a quick kind of example of how I define the load balancer within Docker Compose. But there are a couple things here to point out. If you'll notice, the image I'm referring to isn't a, uh, HA Proxy's kind of official image. It's actually a wrapper uh, that I have created. And I do this because, again, based on those kind of best practices I like to follow, I want everything here inside the Compose file. And um, you know, generally speaking, to configure something like HA Proxy, you would either provide an external configuration file, which you might load into the container, or a variety of other configuration uh, options. But what I've done here is kind of created this wrapper image uh, that you can refer to um, on GitHub. And what it does is it basically takes in this environment variable called, called nodes and dynamically builds the HA proxy configuration for those nodes referenced in that environment variable. The other thing we're doing here, obviously, is specifying or exposing ports. 26257 is the default cockroach port. 8080 is the port at which Cockroach, the Cockroach web or, or console exists on by default. And then 8081 is actually just an HA proxy thing where you can navigate to and kind of see the stats. So in addition to creating a node, I create a, a node or nodes, I create a load balancer to balance um, the connections to the database. And then finally, in a Docker Compose file for Cockroach, what I will often create is something called CRDB init or um, some initialization uh, service, which in this case references another project that, uh, that, that we have created called CockroachDB Remote Client. Why is this important? Well, Cockroach by default doesn't, in, in its, you know, its Docker image, doesn't have really great way to kind of do post cluster startup initialization, meaning do things like create a, a database that your application may need to use by default. 
Maybe you have some settings that you prefer to set every time you start a cluster. Or, um, you know, you have some users or a user that you want to create and have available right at cluster startup. We don't, by default, have a really good way to do this in the out-of-the-box cockroach binary. So we've created this project um, or helper image to do that. And the idea here is that as, as Docker Compose spins up all of the... Um, all of the required services, this will spin up, it will do its work, and then it will disappear and will not be kind of a permanently running container. And so just a couple things, you know, to call out here, we use environment variables to specify a whole host of configuration items uh, that we may use. And again, I would refer you to the readme for this particular project if you're interested in all the things that it can do. But in this case, we're specifying the host to connect to. We're specifying that this is in fact an insecure cluster. We're asking Cockroach to run something called the init command. It's a, it's a Cockroach specific thing. And so we specify Cockroach init equals true. And then again, we're providing a database name here. What is this doing? This is, this is going to, once this cluster comes up and is available, it's gonna create a database called test. So this is a very, very simple stuff, hopefully. Uh, but at the end of the day, a single compose file that contains these elements all I have to do is run Docker Compose up, and here's what I have. I have a fully functional running three-node cluster locally uh, that, that is very powerful. Uh, and not only is it very powerful, and I think this is a key point, it's exactly like what you would be running in production in UAT. It's the same binary. It can be the same configuration. It's the same ports. It's very much a like-for-like -like environment. And again, using these examples, and you would change them to your heart's content in the real world, but using these examples within a matter of seconds, running a simple command like Docker Compose Up, I have a fully functional production-like CockroachDB cluster. And so a couple quick screenshots here of our, our console, which is we're not gonna go into uh, given the, the timing of this particular talk. Uh, but a very feature-rich UI that you can explore the cluster in various metrics. And then just, um, you know, for fun, showing uh, kind of the Docker dashboard and top right. And you can see here that we've started this three-node cluster, CRDB0, CRDB1, CRDB2. We have the LB, the, the HA proxy load balancer. And then just as I described, we have this CRDB init that did some initialization, then exited and then exited normally. So... Uh, this kind of concludes starting up an insecure cluster. One other thing I might note here, I say it on the left, is that, um, you know, start playing around with this. If you're following along at home, spin up a cluster, run an app against it, and then start killing stuff, right? You can kill a node, take a node out of rotation, watch how cockroach behaves, but also watch how your application behaves. The whole purpose, uh, not the whole purpose, but one of the most exciting and interesting things about cockroach is its ability to survive certain failure scenarios, and this is really important. All right, so let's get started or move on to creating secure clusters with CockroachDB. So in a lot of ways, this is gonna be very similar to creating insecure clusters, but the main difference here is there's, we're introducing some additional complexity because we have to generate certificates. In this case, we're gonna be generating self-signed certificates, but you know, if you wanted to kind of extend this example, we could include um, you know, properly signed um, certificates from a, a certificate authority. But in this case, one of the first things we're going to do is generate self-signed certificates that the rest of the cluster can use. And, and what are we doing here or why? Well, our best practice is, is to run Cockroach in secure mode. This means using certificates for authentication, using certificates for internode communication. It's just a much more secure way of running Cockroach DB. Do you have to run it in secure mode in local development? No, of course not. And that's why we started with an insecure mode because it's a little bit easier to get up and running. But secure mode's important. And again, what we're trying to do and show here is that even when I'm adding this additional complexity of a secure cluster, it's still very easy to do with Docker Compose. So what is different or how do we get started with uh, generating or running a secure cluster? Well, the first thing is we have to, as I said, generate these SSL certificates. We've taken it upon ourselves to create yet another helper image here. You can see it's called some, it's something called CockroachDB Dynamic Certs. And what this is doing is uh, generating the necessary client and node certificates behind the scenes and then uh, 
placing them inside a path or a directory that we mount as a volume and that ultimately we expose to the rest of the nodes in the cluster. So pretty simple stuff here, but this is an additional step from creating a secure cluster. We have this Roach cert um, service that again references this helper image and will generate based on what we specify down below in this environment variable called node alternative names, it will generate the appropriate certificates based on the information that's, um, that's placed here. And again, if you're interested in seeing kind of how we are, are doing this, what the contents of this helper container are, you can certainly click on the link here or navigate to, uh, to this GitHub project to see exactly what we're doing. But this generally makes um, the creation of certificates very, very easy. So now that the certificates have been created, we need to specify cockroach um, DB nodes, just like we did in an insecure, um, in the insecure example. There are a couple differences, and those I try to at least highlight in red here. And that really is around A, um, for host name, we want to start to use uh, a fully qualified domain name, as opposed to just kind of a basic container name like we've, we've seen and done before. This helps us um, generate certificates a little bit more cleanly and a little bit more easily. Beyond that, the start command looks pretty much the same. We specify a cluster name. We try to pare down logging to warning only, but you can see here we've added a couple properties that are important. One, we're telling the cockroachdb start command that, um, that it's, uh, it can find its certificates, required certificates in this particular directory, which, oh, by the way, is a volume mount. And then the other thing we're doing, again, because we're using a fully qualified domain name, we're just going ahead and being very, very crystal clear here that we want Cockroach to listen and ultimately advertise uh, with this host name in this port. So pretty easy to do. Again, very similar to starting a CockroachDB node in an insecure fashion, but just a couple other additional configuration here, items here. Just like we did in insecure mode, we want to use HAProxy to front uh, or load balance these nodes for us or connections to these nodes for us. And so again, very, very similar. The difference here is again, this use of fully qualified domain names, uh, both at the host name uh, property here and then the environment variable where we, we've provided this nodes environment variable. And instead of just the, the container or, or simple host names, we're providing um, to this HA proxy helper, a list of fully qualified domains. But again, very simple to do, uh, not a whole lot of changes from secure mode. And then finally, just like we did in secure mode, we want to initialize the cluster once the nodes and the load balancer are up. And so how do we do that? Very simple. It's just some additional environment variables that we pass to this remote client helper container. First, we have to tell that it's not, it's running in insecure mode or it's not running in insecure mode, excuse me. So cockroach insecure is false. We provide a cockroach certs dir variable and pass into it the path where those uh, certificates can be found. We're specifying the database name just like we did in insecure mode, but because we're now running in secure mode and the UI and other activities need now a username and password, we're providing this database user and database password environment variable um, so that this initializing container, initializer container can add those to the database upon startup. And then just like you saw with uh, the other containers, we're gonna specify a volume that points to the location where our directories can be found. And so, you know, here we go again, the cluster is, is, is now ready, or I should say we kind of understand what we have to do. We have to, start, uh, we have to start a load balancer. We have to start a certificate generating container. Roach cert is what we call it, the service name. We have to start the nodes. Unfortunately, and I alluded to this at the beginning, um, I haven't quite figured out how to properly and completely um, sequence cluster or, or services starting. Uh, in this particular case, what needs to happen is that Roach cert container needs to start, generate uh, the appropriate certificates, drop them in this volume, uh, and those need that needs to be available completely before spinning up the remaining nodes in the load balancer. As some of you may know or may have found out, this is, tends to be kind of a difficult thing to do with Docker Compose. There's some there's some workarounds surely that are out there. None I loved. 
Uh, and so I did something that I claimed I wouldn't do or don't typically like to do. And so instead of being able to run Docker Compose up to start my secure cluster, I have a helper, a shell script that kind of orders these events very nicely and does some, some waits, some well-timed waits in order for the cluster to get up and running. Hopefully, eventually, um, either A, I can come up with a better solution or B, Docker Compose can help us um, do this a little bit better. But nonetheless, you know, we have now started or can start a, a you know, a, a very production-like secure cluster uh, with, with very minimal effort. So let's wrap this thing up. Docker Compose is really powerful. It's a great way to build and share complex environments for local development and testing. If you do it well, it can be as simple as sharing a single file with no dependencies that allow you to start a complex system with something as simple as three words, Docker Compose Up. This is something we strive to do or have strived to do with the CockroachDB examples today. Secondly, CockroachDB is easy. Sure, centralized databases are really easy, but they're also really limited in the kinds of things that they can do, both in production and in testing. Distributed databases are kind of slowly replacing centralized databases, but there are many distributed databases out in the world today that are enormously complex, not only in production, but really, really difficult to deploy and test locally. That makes it harder to build applications. That makes it harder to ensure that the things that you're building today are going to work tomorrow in the real world. CockroachDB simplifies deploying and testing certainly distributed a distributed database locally. It's a single binary. It exposes two ports. It's a simple technology. It's a simple topology. It's a simple architecture. It makes deploying a database, a distributed database, dead simple locally. And why is that important? Because you get to develop like you deploy. In other words, you get to develop against a technology, a database that's going to look, function, perform, behave in a local environment just like it would in UAT, just like it would in production. That's incredibly important. It gives you confidence that your tests are right. It gives you confidence that when you release to production the code that you've written, the code that you've been working on, the tests that you've run are an accurate um, reflection of a production environment. We start to get away from those, well, geez, it worked on my machine. Well, of course it did. Your machine's very, very different than production, not with the combination of CockroachDB and Docker Compose. And of course, we get to test lots and lots of failure scenarios easily. If you're deploying and testing against a shared environment, it's tough sometimes to take down nodes, to inject chaos and disaster into those systems and understand how your applications behave. Deploying a complex yet simple system like CockroachDB locally that can handle those kinds of scenarios makes it really, really easy to predict how your application will behave when things go bump in the night, or worse yet, when things go bump during the day. So let's just quickly review some of the resources uh, that were mentioned during today's talk. Uh, there are a handful of GitHub repositories out there that I'd love for you to visit. Uh, first and foremost was the Docker examples repository, which contains the uh, Docker Compose YAML files that, that we showed today. There are lots of examples in that particular repository. We focused on two today. One was insecure cluster with init, I believe, or, um, or example HA proxy with init, I believe is the actual official title. And the second was example secure, but there are a whole host of other things that you might be interested in. So with that, thank you. Thank you very much for listening, for joining this talk. If you need to get in touch with me, I'm happy to respond to messages on LinkedIn, happy to respond to email. Any way you can find me, I'm happy to talk about CockroachDB, Compose, anything that's on your mind.